to episode one of the real talks with Nadal and myself. In this episode, we're going to be talking about role models. Now, when you hear the term role models, it can literally be an actor, it can be a sportsman, it can be, for our case, YouTube. That didn't work. I was trying to shut my back door, it didn't work. Fuck off, bird. Um, so, yeah, for our case, it was YouTube. Um, the dog's gonna start writing down from when we wants to write, and I'm just gonna talk from there. I started my YouTube career first, I, I did it first in about, oh god, 2000 and 11, maybe 12, but I was just goofing off, making very stupid singing videos, and uh, challenge videos which were quite viral back in the day uh, and then I took a break from all that and then I came back in 2016 and I started to do vlogs and I've uh, done quite a few but then me and the, the, the doll was like why don't you do uh, why don't you try podcasting obviously and I've done a few on myself I was few moan obviously but it's never been yeah never been up to the standard but from 2016 to now obviously you get so many role models that you people that you can watch and that you can admire and want to do the same as them um if we're talking vlogging wise it was Syndicate, Tom Syndicate. But if you just if you weren't like watching the YouTube videos and stuff like that, and wanting to do stuff like that was the gaming videos. You had the Sidemen, and you had like where was trying to think. You've got so many of the YouTubers out there that do gaming videos, and they became like. Popular, really popular in the once in the gaming scene and then becoming in the in the scene of like changing it up doing more real life videos and that's where you start watching them and enjoying their content more got anything to say or are you still typing i started my youtube channel just because I wanted to express myself by poetry through film and yeah. Yeah, uh Nado back in school was a bit of a poetic little bastard. He used to woo the ladies and we're not talking about school girls, we're talking about the the ladies. We're talking about the teachers and the TAs. We wanted to do this for so long just sit down, talk about literally anything and obviously we're talking about role models in this one like from where it, people that we look up, look up to, who we got inspired by but we just wanted to do a thing where we sit down and talk and record it like me obviously I can talk, the dog obviously you're hearing him off his iPad so when he's typing it out and everything it may take him a bit more time but that's what's the inspiration about it. He's found the time and the effort to go, I ain't got a voice, fuck it, let me make my voice. And no, that's not me being disrespectful, people, that's going to comment now. I think this will be something amazing. Oh, yeah. We can literally take, obviously, we're going to do the things of Devil's Africa on some things where. I'm gonna take, he's either going to take the bad side, I'm going to take the bad side on certain views. But majority of the time we're just going to sit here and talk about what we think of the world and what it can, it could, 
things that can be done to change it because there are a lot of things that we've got views on and there's one in particular that we're going to go mm-hmm. we've got a lot to say in that podcast and it was up until oh god I've gone one this morning talking about ideas and thinking about stuff to talk about our views our views yeah it's going to be our perspective on things mm. many things that we've got we, me and Adol are very, culturally we're very different, and Adol's African, I'm white. So there's very, but it comes, we're very like, we've got different, we've got a lot of different styles with us. Adol likes different kind of music, rap, all that sort of stuff, which we can go into some music and I think, so who sort of role models do you find now? Why you're talking? I'll talk about man. See, I'm very diverse. I can go from Disney music all the way up to hardcore metal. The only music I cannot listen to is grime. Yes, I don't know what it is about grime, but it just doesn't get my boat. But yeah, if we're talking about music scene, obviously. It, See, growing up, I was very diverse with the music that I listened to. I was at, I had a, I had an opera, opera stage, I had a country stage. I had, oh, I had so many stages of like listening to different music. We're talking opera, we're talking like, uh, sh- what's his name? Pavarotti, we're talking Andrea Bocelli, all the greats. And then going to country, you've got. Uh, Rascal Flats, you, who I've recently got into, you've got Blake Shelton, which is the biggest one, Keith Urban, Keith Whitley, and then there's the thing of uh, Disney, and then you can't go wrong with Disney. Anyone that says so can kiss my middle finger. <laughs> you thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? Like days. Like there's a guy called fucking Dave. Hmm. Oh, there are some weird people in the world. No disrespect if your name's Dave, but you wouldn't think a, a lyrical rapper would be called Dave. He is black. You wouldn't fucking think that. No, you think Dave, you think of a white fat man. Hmm. What the god, do you think that? I do, I do personally, but you know, that's just me. Going from uh, music, going to sport. If there are loads of sportsmen out there. One of the biggest sports that we used to do in school was uh, rugby. Came, uh, we became like a competitive sport on a Monday. And obviously we had uh, the whole Six Nations not long ago. Yeah, we had a rugby club on a Monday where I would sabotage people and be a little bastard. It was fun though. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was definitely fun. It was taking it like we... Right, so we were... What basically happened was we got into rugby because of our, one of the teachers. She got us all into rugby and uh, decided if you like rugby that much, why don't we do a club? From the we set up a club. There was about how many of us? There was me, you, you, Alan, Adele, Armin, and Josh. So six of us. Damn, we fucking depleted. Damn, from everyone we used to have. Woo. Mm. Um. Yeah. So we we used to do rugby club, and it was like. Only in the hall that we used to have in the obviously in the winter, but as it got warmer, we went outside. Um, but the thing was like the the ball hit. So obviously I use a wheelchair. The dog can walk. Josh had his frame. Adil had his chair, and Alan would sometimes uh, he'd get in the chair, wouldn't he, to limit himself. So the thing was, if you the ball hit the chair, or if you hit the doll, if you hit 
Uh, if you hit a deal share or armor share, or if you hit Josh's frame or hit the doll, then you had five seconds with the ball to make a try. Um, didn't always work because the doll used to sabotage people by running into them fully and making them fall over. Or Alan would hit into Armit and make him fall, make his chair tip over. Uh. That was a bad day because he always broke his head open. Mm. Remember that? And then there was me with a deal. I was I was a little bastard to a deal. So our friend Dill, who we're gonna soon have the po- on the podcast mm. in the near future, he's got muscular dystrophy. Um, so he basically can't lift his arms. So I, every time you'd get the get the ball, I would be a little very mean to him, and I'd lift his hand off his off of his controller, and then run away. <laughs> I was so mean. And then there was Josh. Who would just run around try and break your ankles and like he did not care what he did because he'd, he'd get the ball and then like all of a sudden you go to him by the way he is very smart idea oh yeah it was like there was listen there's six of us in the group and like combined probably the five of us don't even make up half his iq and is beyond Imaginable with his smart line. And the dog is up, is up there with his level of it. And then I'd say me. And then you got Armit. And then unfortunately mm. you got Josh in the bottom. Like, he has been on TV. Yeah, he's been on many. He's been on TV. He's met the Prime Minister. Not the one that we've got now, so he's bitch. He met, who was it? Boris Johnson? Yeah, when he was Prime Minister. He's done a lot of lot of things to do. And that's one thing like, we get him on, obviously. We can get him to talk about all the things that he's experienced. He's like... The mayor of four. The mayor. The mayor, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there, was, and there was like, if we're talking like role models within us, he's one for us. Because he can take something so small and then make, his, make it this big thing. Like we used to do, if we're gonna go back to school, like sports day and shit like that. Um, he would take a piece of paper for the teams and managed to create such like strong, diverse mi- amount of teams for people. And then, obviously Reds would win because they'd be bastards. <clears throat> but, that's the shade, sorry. <laughs> uh, but then if we were given like a, if we were given a, a task to create like an event, which we were given in FE, we had a bunch of, and then there, all the kids come in from what was it Riverside? Was it Riverside? When they used to come in on a Monday, and we used to have to create the games. I can't remember. There was a. I know we went to a school. We went to Riverside, so we went. So this was completely different. We went to a school, and the whole thing of the day was like we had to be our own role models. Um, and we had to basically plan the whole day. I don't know, was it still there that day? I don't think it was, I think it was Alan who was in charge, wasn't it? Yeah. So our friend Alan was in charge of the day of... We all had different responsibilities. Like the teacher was there, Guy Wilkins, he was there, but he was like, I'm not helping you. You've got to do it. You've got to set up. You know the, you know the rules of the game. You have 15 minutes per game, and uh, you've got to do this. And that's basically what happened that day. We had a bit of a mix-up, because Ahmed didn't want to do his job. If you remember. Yeah, don't look at me like that. Ahmed didn't want to do his job, and he got Lauren to help him. Really? Mm-hmm. Because it was me and Alan, we were the ones that kind of got everyone to do it. You had your one, Josh had his one. Um, William had his one, and then there was Armit, and there was other people doing other stuff. I don't know the people I can remember. Um, but Armit was like refusing to do it, and he had Botcher. He had the easiest sport there is, and he was like, "I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it." So the teacher that helped us do the rugby, obviously, she had a, she had what we call a special spot for Armit. Mm-hmm. You know, she would like, "Oh come on, Armit," and Armit would go, "Okay." And like, 
teacher's pet ass fucking friends. <laughs> but yeah, that day was fun because we had to take it. We had to become our own role models. And by the end of the day, we were, f- we were knackered. Because of all the stuff we had to do. Excuse me. We went from doing it outside to doing it indoors. And when we did it indoors, there wasn't that much space. So when it was circling, when it came to circling, everyone got confused on what we was going to do. And that was just like... <sighs> it was difficult. But we managed to do it in the end. Um, but that, that was like one of the things that we used to do at school. Our teacher guy, um, he would push us to our limits and make sure that we had... It. Like over, on a Friday we'd have PA. And he'd take someone at random that maybe didn't have the best of confidence. Like, I don't know, let's say... Let's say Armit for this fact. But he'd get Armit to lead a group group game of something. And then if Armit couldn't if Armit didn't want to do it, he'd get someone else to help him. But he would try and boost everyone's confidence in the best way possible. Yeah guy, the sport teacher sees the pattern on you even when you don't. Sees the positive in you. Even when you don't. Yeah, that was one of the that was one of the things about school. I'll admit, like, when we talk about school, like, there were, there were a few teachers that had the, the capability to go, alright, here's what we want you to do, and you could actually do it. Because they weren't giving you the self-belief that most of the teachers, that some of the teachers could. Like, majority of the teachers was like, get on with it, do what you got to do. There were very few teachers, majority of the TAs were better than the teachers, if honest. Like, you can, if you roll back through the years, there weren't many teachers that could literally go, um, we want you to do this, we want you to do that, we want, and when it came to presentations and stuff like that, no one really had the, uh, the self-belief in them to go, alright, I can do this because this person's given me the support and everything to do it. Like, you, I would literally say you had Guy, Lauren. Fuck, what was Paul? What was Paul's name? I can't think his name. Let's say Mr. Nagel rather their names. <laughs> Mr. Nagel, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll remember his first name now. Yeah, but when you say there were the three teachers at the school that really gave you the self belief? Miss Hastings and Mr. Wilkins. Mm hmm. That's their name, by the way. They were the... They were the Mr. Nagel, Miss Hastings... Oh, do you reckon anything... Do you reckon she's the Mrs. now? No? Mm-hmm. You reckon she's a still Miss? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you got Mr. Wilkes and Mr. <coughs> Nagel and then Miss Hastings. They were the three that was like influential for like us. We're moving forward with what we wanted to do. Hmm. There's a few people that, there was a few staff members that would be like, oh, here it goes. <laughs> there was a few, definitely a few staff members that would literally go to the sky. Duncan was really good. Oh, yeah, Duncan was one of like, Duncan was a G. Like that guy. He was like one of the best, we used to do, um, on a Thursday we used to do, uh, going up to uh, the, the gym, do you remember? <laughs> and we used to go up there on a Thursday, I got, ba- I got banned from the gym, I wasn't allowed to go after one incident, after these fuckers, oh. I'm on the cross, tra- the cross trainer, yeah, no you wasn't you, it was fucking <clears throat> Josh, I think it was, I'm on the cross trainer, and on the cross trainer you can have it go really really hard which is like 10 maybe 10 upwards or it can be really easy for you now if it goes really easy which can go on zero um it's not the best it really isn't because you can go really really fast and uh yeah i went really really fast and i passed out and next thing i know i was on the floor 
when I wake up, I have Nadal, I have Josh, I have Ahmed, I have, I think, and Bill was there for some reason. And you had Alan all pissing themselves laughing because I ended up on the floor. There was one other dude there, but I'm not going to say his name. You know who I'm talking about? The guy with a broken leg that may have never used to come in. Josh Cousin. Was he Josh's cousin? See, I was very mm. skeptical about that. I don't think he mm. was Josh's cousin. I think Josh likes to use to say it because they were like, it might have been his mm. second cousin or something like that. But yeah, I know who you mean, and you know who I mean. The guy was a bit of a weird one. Uh, came from a... Came from a school where he didn't have disabilities, came into our school with disabilities. And then, uh, yeah, just... Coopers. Yeah, he came from Cooper's. Obviously, the school we used to go to was bang in the middle. And, uh... He came from there and then joined, like... Year 11, maybe year 10. Year 10, no, year 11. Yeah. What was year 11, wasn't it? Yeah, it joined then. It wasn't. You didn't think there was anything wrong with him, in a sense. Yeah, he broke his ankle and everything. He was blind in one eye, I think. Oh, I didn't. I honestly did not know that. I just thought he was a very weird child. But yeah, people, that was like, if you think about it, we were at school, what year did you leave? Because mm -hmm. I left in, you must have left in 24 in. Mm -hmm. No, yes, mm -hmm. no, no, 2015? 2015. 2015, yeah. I, so I left in 2014. I left a year before the dog to pursue. Basically, I was like, I can't stay here no longer. I have to go out and find another reason to go. Another reason to move on. So I did. And then obviously I went into college. My dog, the dog stayed behind. Well, when I was at college, I had one of the biggest like role models which was my uh, mature. I can't remember her name now. But she was very influential in what I wanted to do. And Marjorie or And Marjorie? No. College. Hmm. So we never went to... oh yeah, we did actually it was gone. Marjorie. I was like, did we have Marjorie? <laughs> we did. I was just like I was kinda of blocking out the fact that we had chewers and Marjorie. Because they weren't really chewers. Hmm. They were teachers that were trying to be chewers that just turned out to be like you had miss you had mrs wolf for god's sake uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> uh she's a lovely lady but she does like to uh, patronize you a little bit when you're uh, when you're like 16 17 talking to you like you're five i think that was the re that was half the reason with the school when you were not, even but even when you went to college, that you still had like the whole. You didn't really have much of people talking to you when you were older, were you? Like he used to do fucking gardening and stuff like that. Remember? I'm not a Josh was there at the time. Say so that again. Josh was there at the time. Yeah, and Ahmed and Josh did two years of you. And then Ahmed dropped out. Yeah. Josh got kicked out. Because he didn't ever came. Mm. And uh, you're just finishing off your final year of college. Moving on from all that, what are you going to do now? Now that you've finished college, what are you going to move on to? That's the big question. Because I, I did college from 2014 to 15. I did a year of college, I did health and social care. Um, did that, but it wasn't ultimately what, I, ultimately what I wanted to do. It was just like a stepping stone for where I wanted to go. 
Um, but once I did that, I was like, obviously I wanted, always wanted to be, be a counsellor. So I went on to another course to Steps to Employment, which was quite embarrassing because I was a 19 year old with a bunch of 40 to 30 to 40 year olds on the course. And it was some fun, so I dropped out. Go on. Continuing just doing my thing, filming and stuff like that. That's fine. As long as you've got something set on what you want to do there. Because like, you don't want to be doing what Josh does. I, I'm calling Josh out right now. <laughs> I'm calling him out. Okay. Mm. Our friend, like, he's 22 and he sits on his ass and plays video games all day. He's a very lazy motherfucker. But he has been in contact recently with Minecamp about getting himself a job. Whether that happens or not, it will be a bit of a miracle if he does. Because he does need to get his butt out there a little bit more. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully, because it'll give it'll give him incentive to do something. Because he was always ever since he left Marjorie, he always wanted to do coaching, like whether it was football coaching or just being a PE coach. But there's lots of different levels that you have to take to do that, and you've got to have certain grades to, to become a PE coach. Like we say, our friend is a little bit on the lower scale of knowledge. We love him, but he can say some... <laughs> exactly. Questionable things sometimes. But we do love him, he's, but we, yeah, he's just... We're not trying to beat the shit out of you, Josh, on this podcast, but, you know. Next time, when you say something, think before you talk. I I do reckon if he's gonna get the help from Minecamp, he will get a job doing something that he wants and loves. Um, whether it happens in the, this year, we don't know. Like obviously, another thing would be like Ahmed doing something as well, because as far as we know, all he's doing is the same thing as Josh. I know he said that he's going to groups and stuff, yeah. but that's not really the same, you know, that's just like... I mean, like... Yeah, you, I argue. You... You get it? Yeah, I agree. Mm, you agree. It is, because like, we're 23, 22, we know what we want to do with ourselves. Like me, I'm a counsellor now, and Adele's continuing with filming and getting himself out there. We get, and you've got Armin and, Armin and Josh, they kind of, they need that motivation and role model from someone, bringing it back to the whole subject we're talking about, to move on and do something with them. Like my role model was like, pursuing my dream, knowing that, what you want, Bush? Fuck you then. Push them. I, yeah, he's, they need someone to push them and, say, and tell them, listen, you're not doing nothing with your life. Do it. Like, we've, we've told them, mm-hmm. oh, countless times, mm. that they need to do something with their lives instead of just sitting down. Like, me and Adult, we go stir crazy when we're not doing nothing. You know? Occasionally we'll take a day just to binge watch some TV programs and stuff like that. But if we're not doing anything with ourselves, we get bored very easily. Whereas Josh and Ahmet, they're accustomed to that. And they, their lifestyle is just wake up, watch TV, eat food, get on with the day. There's no one really going to them and I'm not saying it's because of their family, because it's not, it's themselves, they just have it within themselves to go, I want to do this. Where can I do this? How can I do this with the help of others? Whereas me and the doll, we've said, we're, we've been, yes, we've had people in a way push us to the next level. We've also had the, the tough and great inside of us to go, 
I want to get to that next level. Josh and Omer are just at the point where they're just like, they're content with what they've got. But if they stay in what they're doing right now, 10 years from now, it's not going to be nothing. Say that again. They won't be the same position as today. Mm. But that's the sad thing about it. It's like, I know where I want to be 10 years from now. I want to have a husband, I potentially want to have a kid, and I want to be able to do what I continue doing, which is help people. The dog's the same, he wants to have, find himself a girlfriend, maybe a wife at that point, maybe sit down and have a kid, but he also wants to continue doing the editing and the filming, because that's his, that's his motivation in life, he's got a, he wants to be a role model for his kid. Whereas we've spoken to Josh and Army on these type of points before, and I go to them, what, what do you want to be in 10 years? And their, their answer is always, don't know. How can you not know where you want to be in 10 years? I know it's, um, it seems like a long way away, but you've got to think about what really is going to happen, because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, you don't know what's going to happen next week. Or in a year's time, you've got to be always thinking about countless opportunities that you can take. It's scary to think about, but if you don't think about it, like, time is literally just going to go and you're going to be wrapped up in your own little bubble of things that you... that's not going to happen, and whatever happens, it's like, you're sat there, like, on your own going, Okay, what do I do now? And your parents isn't going to be there forever. Yeah, and the, the club and the dog just said like parents aren't always going to be alive to help us out. And that's the, that's the truth of all. Like my mum, God bless her, like always says to me like she doesn't want to be more than nothing but she goes I'm not going to be around all the time. you got to learn how to do this, you've got to learn how to do that. And as morbid as it sounds, you do have to learn things like that. And just basic things like doing stuff with money and stuff like that. I don't think they they don't really have the concept of it because they get it done for them all the time. They need like a metaphorical kick up the ass to go. All right, do this, do this, do this. How would you do it? Or situate, given them hypothetical situations where something were to happen and then they're put in the shoes of alright and you're the one that's have to do this now. They need a wake up call. Yeah, definitely. A little bit more than Josh, I would say. Josh kind of has his head screwed on right. Armit I would say is a bit like, hmm. Because he believes everyone's gonna when his mum goes he believes everyone will drop everything for him and just look after him, which, trust me, that's not going to happen. Once you learn, soon learn that in be the better. But yeah. Mm. Oh, drop the iPad, please. How long are you going to keep this going for? How long do you want to go for? What's something that you haven't accomplished yet that you want to accomplish in the future. To create a platform where we have conversation and build a community as we started today and as well I want to make films with a message behind it. What about you? Hmm. See where you're coming from, especially with the films. I mean, the dolls always wanted to do films. Even back in school we were trying to direct the film. But it never panned out because no one was really up to doing the whole filming part. Me, you see, like, I just want to be settled down, find someone, m make sure, like, I've got a pl I'm, at, I'm at a platform where if people need to come talk to me about anything, they can just go, listen, need to talk, can we talk? And for not to be an, it not be an issue, like one thing we will definitely do is like we will find someone that has got 
Um, I talk about mental health or something, and we'll get them on to talk about it. I know a few people that we can talk to. Um, but I want that to be known that I want to know that I want to know that ten years from now there'll be less people coming to counsellors and people like that and saying that they need help because I want the government to know notice that it is such an influential thing that's still happening today that shouldn't be happening. They need to crack down on the system and know people know people people know that it's okay not to be okay. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Are we done? Okay, that's it for episode one. This will be out I don't know when. We will discuss this when and which which uh, channel this will be going on. But yeah, we will see you soon. Sure.